Welcome to the official Jets podcast. Eric Allen here inside the studio, joined by Jets tight ends coach Ron Middleton. It's great to finally have you up here. It's great to be here, E. I'll tell you, when you told me about this Sunday golf tournament, I was like, huh? I didn't know anything about it, but thank you. Thank hey, you for inviting me. Hey, so we played golf together, and for those of you at home, I got to tell you, Ron Middleton uh, is a great golfer. <laughs> no you way, carried man. us that no day way, out man. there in the it course. A, it, was, it was a fun day, I tell you. It was fun. The uh, beers uh, were cold, and so that <laughs> helps. That helps. Yeah, it <laughs> certainly does. Hey, um, how do you leave off your golf game at the end of summer? Um, you know, my golf game is like a roller coaster. I think <laughs> I was having a good day that day with you. Um, I think the next day it went down. So it's the roller coaster, and I left it at a down um, angle. Okay. When I put them in the trunk, <laughs> it was unfortunately. But hey, uh, listen, uh, you as a head coach in the National Football League, though, two and zero record. So mm. it, it, no roller coaster there. How about yeah, those how couple about wins over the past calendar year? <laughs> how about that? Yeah, that tell you what, both of those were were were, were really fun. Um, the one against the Jaguars, I was with the Jaguars for um, eight years, and I tell you to um, get that opportunity. You know, um, Coach Sala gave me that opportunity, man, it, and it was outstanding. And then for the Senior Bowl, um, I'm, I'm, my hometown is 50 miles away from Mobile, so I had a bunch of family and friends there. So that was that was great too. So. Um, on a roll, must be butter. <laughs> on a roll, you know. I love it. <laughs> hey, what do you think about the social reaction out there from uh, some of your clips speaking to the team, whether it be the Jets or some of those college prospects at the time? Did you get any text messages I, from a lot of your friends and family? Yeah, yeah friends, um, family. My my daughter, my five year old daughter, she. Um, she can recite the 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 um, um, just hit them deal before the senior bowl. She she loves that. She tickles me when she says that deal. <laughs> but um, you know it, it it's all genuine. It's from the heart. It's you know it just I say what I feel at the time and. Um, they've seemed to work out pretty good so far so everybody wants to go to heaven mm, but nobody, nobody wants, wants to die, to die yeah, and get there yeah, um yeah. did you think about that one before those came out of your mouth that phrase when i went to duke in um 08 with coach cutcliffe and we after our first practice we brought the team up and whatnot i was associate head coach there and um and and we broke it down, and that was the first time I said that back then. Now, I've said it several more times um, um, since then, but that was the first time I said back in 08, you know. But um, so, yeah, it's, it's in the repertoire. I, I guess I did think of it, but it's, it's, it speaks volumes, you know. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, that, that's so real to me. I, I want to go to heaven, but, you know, <laughs> I don't want to die. Yeah. But I can't get there unless I do. And these guys, they, they, they you know, we want success. We want um, we want to win the game, but we got to put the work in. So that, that's basically what that's saying. You know, we want the finished product, but there's steps to get to the finished product. Man, how about your steps, though? undrafted free agent mm, mm -hmm. played more than 10 years in the national football mm -hmm. league you've been coaching for more than 20 years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you coached a lot on the collegiate level before yep. you started rocking and rolling in the national football league did yep how did you get to the spot um you know when when, when i retired from ball you know, the whole plan while i was playing the whole plan was to go back to law school. Yep. When I was done, I was going to go back to law school. And um, I started taking prep classes for the LSAT and all that. And I was like, man, this ain't for me. And um, I, I, I just missed ball. I wanted to be around ball. And um, I had done a few camps. Some of my um, teammates had summer camps, and I would do those. and. And they would say, oh, man, you just seem like a natural coach. You know, you ever thought about coaching or what? And I said, eh, not really. But And I said, that that's the best, next best thing to play in is coaching. So it worked out for me. I was blessed. And um, it's 
you know, it's been going pretty good so far. Yeah, <laughs> I'd say so. <laughs> but at Auburn, you were pre-law. That was your yeah. major undergrad. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, and why were you so interested in law at that time? You know, I was big, big Matlock guy. Were you? Yeah, big Matlock guy. Really related to him. Um, kind of thought I had a little country wisdom to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I just loved the way he did. Um, uh, Perry Mason was a, was a, um, I was a fan of Perry Mason too. And um, I don't know. I, I just, at that time, I, um, I, I was just infatuated with, with law, but looking at the, Overall picture, you know, um, wanted to get there but didn't want to die. The, the LSAT, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? Wanted to get to that heaven but didn't want to put the work in. I can there, see so. you up there making a closing argument. Yeah, yeah. That or 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 the other the other thing was um, um, a preacher. Yeah. You know, they um, a lot of people thought I was gonna go into to the pulpit and preach. Um, I tell him I don't know. I'd get up there and just catch a fire. You know, <laughs> I don't really want to. I don't really want to uh, chance that. So. Man, uh, we got to have you up here again because uh, you got limited amount of time here in the preseason. There's mm -hmm. so many things that w I'm going to get to today, okay. but down the line that we'll get to as well. Awesome, David Cutcliffe. What did mm. he mean to your career? Oh my gosh! <laughs> I tell you what, Cut Cut was the one that um, um, really gave me my first break. And um, I tell you, I tell people all the time, he's he's a heck of a coach, but he's an even better man. Um, he never walked on water, nor has he raised anybody from the dead, but he's a heck of a man, first and foremost, and um, um, super, super smart coach. I learned a lot from him. I owe, him I, owe, I owe him a whole lot, David Cutcliffe, a whole lot. You were at Mississippi. Then, That's right. Then he brought you to Duke. That's right. That's right. Uh, he gave me my break. He gave me my first break. I was at Troy Yep. with Coach Blakeney. And um, Coach Cutcliffe got Eli Manning. It was, Eli, it was Eli's freshman year. Yep. We recruited him. We signed him his freshman year. And um, Coach Cut got that job. And um, he, um, he brought me along with him um, on that deal. I tell you, it was funny because we actually – took the job or he took the job um and we had like a week or so to prepare for a bowl game okay so <laughs> i drive up to old miss and he tells the story all the time i jump out the car and um go straight to the practice field and start coaching you know that did not met any of the other coaches or anything just give me a script and a whistle and a hat and Go get it, you know, and we hit the ground running literally at Ole Miss. <laughs> so, yeah. so why did – well, it's not like I'm speaking in uh, – I shouldn't speak in past tense, but wh why does he have such a gifted offensive mind? Oh, man. See, I, I think he understands um, – first of all, he understands the quarterback position. Yep. You know, he was Peyton's coach and mentored Eli. Eli. Um, but he, he – he he's not afraid to to try new things, um, but he's always grounded. You know, it starts with the run game, starts with the play action, and you don't need a whole lot. Just be good at what you do. Mm. You know, we didn't have a whole bunch of plays, um, but the kids could could they knew the position, they knew the plays for each position, and I think that that goes a long way. Alabama, mm. 2007. That's right. The Auburn alum. That's right. 2007. Nick right. Saban's first, first year. year. This right. was before he became possibly the greatest head yeah. coach in college football right. history. What was That's that experience right. like? Because you were on the staff. Did you see what was ahead? Nobody could have predict predicted well, what was to come. Well, you kind of could. You, I, really? I did. I um. The day, the morning I went in to tell him that I was leaving, I said, um, Coach, you're going you're gonna to win, and you're going to win soon, um, but I just can't do it with you. Yeah. And um, for, for whatever reason, I, it, you know, I, I wanted to leave. I wanted to go. And, um, well, yeah, and, God gave you that chance too. You yeah, know, right? and, 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 and next year you won the national championship, but I wasn't shocked at all about it. Um, 
that year that I, I was there for one calendar year, one season and whatnot, and um, I learned so much from that man during that year. Um, he was so meticulous and, 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 and organized and um, just a different way of doing things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but there's, there's no accident. He's who he is and, and whatnot. He's driven now. He's driven. Um, some might say to a fault, but, you know, he's, he's excellent what he does. Now, I, I owe him a lot, and I thank Coach Saban um, for, for, for that year. I really do. How deep does that rivalry run? Auburn, Alabama. Auburn, Alabama? We're, Alabama? We're, yeah, we're sitting here in New Jersey. <laughs> I've seen <laughs> I families. I mean, we could talk about it for hours. Yeah, but I, you're I, in, you grew up in Alabama. I've seen families break up, fall apart because of that Alabama-Auburn deal. Um, the first year, talking about 07, yeah. Coach, Coach Saban and I were, um, we were out recruiting. And um, I was driving the car and whatnot. He was sitting there. I was like, um, Coach, you do understand the depth of this Auburn, Alabama rivalry. And he was like, ah, he goes, he, he goes in one of his rants and tirades and whatnot. I've been in big games before, you know, Michigan State, Michigan, you know, Pierce, all that. I said, okay, okay, cool. Well, we play them, of course, the last game, well, the last regular season game, and Auburn beat us. I think that was the, the thumb game or whatnot. Yeah. Okay. So after the game, you know, he calls us up and whatnot. He's like, um, for the next 364 days, we're, we're going to think about this. We're going to get ready for this. And I was th sitting back there in my locker thinking, I was like, I told you this. <laughs> you know, we first uh, started back in the spring, Coach. This thing is real now. It's real. It, 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 I love Auburn. And... Um, that day, I mean, they even irked me. You yeah. know, I was on that. I was coaching at Alabama, but Auburn irked me that day. It, it, it was I, I could feel it, man. I could feel it. Yes. That, now, of course, I was trying to beat them. You know, sure. But, but they um, they irked me that day. But that's yeah. that's still got to be so weird it is. for 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 a kid who grew up in Alabama who played right. there and you're coaching with. That's right. Yeah, you know, you coach it. Uh, I mean, you're growing up. An Auburn guy, right? Right. Uh, no. Well, <laughs> but, y yes. Um, well, obviously, I went to Auburn. Yeah, but but it was no straddling the fence. You know, you either Auburn or you Alabama. There's no straddling yeah. the fence. And um, for a while, I was Alabama, but um, Coach Dye started recruiting me my tenth grade year. Yeah. So I I, I flipped the flipped the script big time, um, uh, and and went fully Auburn. But you know, I coached at Ole Miss. Yep. We. we we have gone into um, at Ole Miss. I've gone into Auburn and coached against Auburn there, and they've come to um, Oxford and coached against them. So I've had some 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 um, games yeah. against Auburn. Yeah. But the Alabama game, you know, coming. I mean, that was that's got to be different. Yeah, it's it got to be it like a different. three hour experience that yeah, you'll never yeah, forget. Yeah, it was it, it was different. Hey, it, it so different. Jacksonville. It, in your NFL career, you spent a lot of time there. We mm -hmm. discussed that you, you being the interim head coach last year when the Jets pulled off a thriller against the Jags at MetLife Stadium. Very cool, yeah, I think. It it, yeah, and Jets Nation really appreciated it. What was Robert Sala like from your standpoint as an assistant uh, coach when you started getting those first interactions with him? Oh, man. He's, first of all, very intelligent. Um, he would come by my office and show me, show me the um, tips and reminders that he'd give his linebackers. Um, he said, "Big Ron, let me let me show you this what and and go through. I still have some of them, you know, just really? impressive, just impressive. Um, great football mind, um, um, uh, very passionate. I think um, I think players really relate to him." It's believable, you know. There are some coaches, <clears throat> excuse me, that fake the funk. You know, this guy doesn't fake the funk. He's definitely a player's coach, um, but he doesn't mind. I mean, he will jump their ass. To, excuse me. No, he, that's he, good. He hey, jump, this is a podcast, yeah, right? He will jump their ass, man. And and that's what I. I, I mean, he's a great guy, first of all. Um, 
and he's a player's coach, and he understands their point of view or whatnot. But, hey, he believes in a certain way that it's done, and he's going he's gonna to expect and demand that from them. And, um, you know, they say, well, and a heck of a golfer. See, that's how, I, that's how we came. Because uh, yep. we were at Jacksonville. He and I would go and play golf together um, when no one else would. we get in at free time, boom. Robert, we, let's go. You know, we'd go play golf. And um, was he a competitive son of a gun on the golf course as well? Yes. Yeah. Well, he, very always, he always, always tells me oh. that. Hey, yeah, Ron would buy me lunch because, yeah, he, yeah because yes, I, I'd be yes. taking care of business out yes, there. Yes. Yes. He. Um, uh, I've. I beat him once. Now he won't. He won't um, admit to it. But I. I did beat him once. And um, where. It was. Um, was it down in Florida? It was in Florida. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's too good now. I can't. I can't touch it. Plus, he got these nice clubs and stuff. Now, you know, the head coach money can. You can buy a game too. You know. So um, I, I've seen you play. I yeah. know those are some close outings. <laughs> no, but he. I mean, we talk about apples and eggs. Mine compared to his, uh, it's it's no comparison, really. Can you make them break a couple smiles on the golf course? Because, Robert. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. yes, 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 okay. yes. No question. He's usually playing good so it's easy for him to smile then you yeah. know um but i've 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 seen him frustrated too a couple of times but um he's um he's a heck of a golfer i'm sure he'll hear that now but, yeah. <laughs> so um what's he like when he is frustrated because we do see him uh, you're talking to the media, and obviously he's a gentleman. He's mm -hmm. positive, and just to see him in those glimpses, what what is Robert yeah, like? Well, you know it. You know he's upset, um, or something's really irking him. Um, but he's so in control. I've never seen him out of control. Yeah. You know he's, um, and 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 it's genuine. You know, his emotions are genuine and whatnot, but I've, I've, I've never seen him out of control or just irate. I wish I could say the same about myself, but, you know, he's <laughs> – he. I, I told somebody um, he was ready to be a head coach. Yeah. You know, um, he, you know, I, I think some people are, are, are um, just lucked out and got the opportunity or whatnot, but this, this, this guy prepared for it. <clears throat> he prepared to be a head coach, and um, he was ready when he got. I'm, I'm just glad he's got. He got his shot. Yeah. I'm not going to ask you for players that wouldn't be right, but how does he get after players' asses, as you just said? Oh. Like hey, there are times. How, how does how does he do it? And oh yeah, he'll call him out in the team room. Yeah. He's, but he'll have video evidence of what he's saying. Yep. Um, we'd be in a team meeting. He say, "Hey, dog, this 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 ain't it. Right. This ain't it. You know." It, this ain't how we do things. This ain't what we're about and whatnot. And um, he doesn't mind, you know, but he'll, put, he'll point it out there. And I think the players appreciate that. You know, we, we have a standard. No, no one is above those standards. Um, everyone has to adhere to the standard, and he holds them accountable to that. Um, coaches, too, now. Yeah. You know, <laughs> hey, coaches, hey. Get your get your guys right, you know, because he he says all the time we all are replaceable, so don't get it twisted. Yeah, well, no. Ron Middleton doesn't have it twisted. Let's talk about your group, okay. real quickly. Okay. Total transformation from last year, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, how, it's how, about, how about these uh, free agent vets? How are they fitting in? And uh, how much have you enjoyed being around C.J. Uzama, an Auburn alum? Yeah, and yeah, then, Auburn. I'll yeah. tell you what. I don't know if the football world was sleeping on Tyler Conklin, mm, but mm -hmm. him playing in New York, I don't think they're going to be sleeping on him anymore. No, he's – I'll tell you what, this guy, Tyler, he's hit the ground running. I, I – I, I felt good about this guy when he was coming out of college. You know, I looked at looked back at my notes um, just to see exactly what I had written. I knew what I, I knew what I felt about him. But um, you know, I, I'm not surprised. This guy's hard worker. He shows up every day. Um, he's talented. Um, it means something to him, and um, he 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 takes advantage. Um, and the, he makes the most of every opportunity he has. And um, the guy appreciates it. Yeah. You know, he really does. 
CJ CJ is um, you know CJ is the is 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 I think a natural leader, you know, and he's and he leads by example. Um, nobody works harder than CJ, um, um, and he don't mind calling people out or being vocal and whatnot. And 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 you need that. I think I think a team needs that, and he's uh, he does a heck of a job doing that. Um, he and Conk, I mean, they get along f really well. Yeah. Um, I think they have the same agent or something too. Or, but they um, they get along real well. Um, there's no there's no riff or no ego or anything like that. Both of them are they just want to win. You know, they want to win, and um, I appreciate that about them. Yeah, for sure. Uh, from what I've seen so far in practice, there's going to be a lot of times when they're on the field together. Together, yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, Jeremy Rocker, obviously, uh, you guys liked him. You draft him in the third round. He's a local kid. He's mm -hmm. got a good head on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. But with all that being said, it's a big learning curve right now, right? After sure. the time he, he missed. And, sure. and, and he's going to have to be patient with himself. That's the big thing right there. And, um, you know, he and I talk every day. You know, where your head at today? Uh, you know, if I see him looking looking down, hey, you okay? What's going on? You know, because he's so competitive, um, and and he wants to be out there so bad. But you know, it's it's a it's gonna be a process. Mm -hmm. He's got to get well, and but you can see the few snaps that he's gotten so far. You can see why you like the kid. Yeah. You know, he's um he's got all the tools, man. And 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 the biggest thing is. Um, he loves ball. He loves ball. Yeah. And um, that's going to get him um, to where he wants to be a whole lot faster than yeah. anything else. Because the talent is there. The tools are there. Um, and he and he loves it. He wants to be great, you know? I, I think it's a cool group. Let's just end on this, that you, you got guys like Kenny Yeboah mm -hmm. who flashed – last year in mm -hmm. the summer of course and he'll benefit from another year and then Lawrence mm -hmm. Cager is a guy that I don't think people talk about but I mean that speaks to his mentality too hey maybe you should transition sure. over to tight end that's you right know? that's right um it's been done before <laughs> you know um I think he has the right attitude he's not scared at all um and I keep reminding him that the the standards and the mentality in the tight end room is it's different. I ain't gonna say totally different, but it's different. Excuse me, than the receiver room. And um, he's buying into that. And you know, I've, I've just been tickled pink. You know, this is a guy I've never been in a three point stance. I had to teach him how to be in a three yeah, point yeah. stance and. Um, just some of the, the the calls. He's never heard some of the just generic terms, uh, um, blocking terms, or or combinations with the tackles, or pass setting. You yeah. know, and hands, left, all those things. You know, it's he's done great. He's worked his butt off to um, get to where he's now. He's got a long way to go, sure. but. Um, very pleased with where he's at right yeah, now. Yeah, and uh, Trayvon Wesco is a guy who's never seen a body that he hadn't liked to hit. <laughs> I mean, right. he, he's well, going to be out the, there popping. You got the little Wesco, yeah. man. He he played. He's old school. He's throwback. Um, I heard a bunch of the guys say, "Oh, he's just a young mid." What? And I said, "No, nah, he ain't as tough as I was back then." But he, he thinks he is, but he's not as tough as I was. All no. right, so you got to go, uh, young mid. Um, Scouting report on uh, what you were in the NFL. Did you tell you that then? Me? For yeah. Me? Oh, yeah. gosh. It, What's that in there? I, I, I never saw a block I didn't like. I love blocking. Um, that was my wheelhouse. Um, if you threw me the ball, I caught it. <laughs> um, but I knew, I knew what paid my bills. Um, I followed that offense, you know, it was in college and – um, blocking for Bo Jackson, um, the motion tight end, the the all, I stayed in that offense. I, I excelled in, it. like I said, it paid my bills for a long time. I wasn't disillusioned by any means, you know, that that I was going to line up out wide and run deep routes <laughs> and all that. That that wasn't that wasn't my deal. But um, I won a lot of games. Um, I'm at the, I made some money, not a lot of money, but made some money doing it. Ten year career and. Won me a Super Bowl, so 
you know, I'm very proud of my product, what I put on tape. Very proud of it. Not too bad. I appreciate the summer visit. Uh, we're going to try to get you back in the st- studio do. again. Yeah. You are my favorite golfing partner here at One Jet Stride. <laughs> I'm my dude. We had, fun. we had fun that day. I tell you, we had fun. Thanks, no buddy. Doubt. Thank you, E.